Hey everyone, and welcome back to a new video, this time on FT Printf. This is going to be a quick explanatory video, uh, divided into two parts. The first part is going to be an explanation of Printf and of the functions that uh, we're allowed to use to implement it. And the second part of the video is going to be a visual representation of how you can use these functions in this project. So if you've already done some research, maybe you want to skip to the second part. I will only be talking about the mandatory part of the subject, not the bonus, but I will not be showing you any code anyway, so... And I'll be switching to English for this video, because even though we have quite a few French-speaking uh, 42 or 42 schools, I also do realize that we now have what seems like an infinity of uh, English-speaking schools, and um, I'm just hoping this will make things easier for everyone, including myself, because I will not have to uh, take uh, hours to do subtitles anymore, it's so boring. So starting with printf, I'm sure you've already been using it uh, quite a lot. Uh, printf is actually part of the have a family of functions that produce uh, output according to a format. So basically they just print out stuff according to uh, what you ask of it in a string of characters, as you can see in the prototype. And uh, you might not know this yet, but uh, printf actually returns a value, which is an int, and it's uh, the number of characters that it printed. So you have to remember it because it's important in this project, you have to keep this in mind. And you should also, of course, take a look at the ellipsis in the function prototype. Uh, this ellipsis means that printf is uh, what we call a variadic function. A variadic function is a function that can take a variable number of arguments, so it can be 0, 1, 5, 15, 50 arguments, and they can all be of different types, meaning you can give it uh, one argument that's an int, one that's a character, one that's a, a string of characters. Uh, every single one can be a different uh, type of argument. And so to implement this behavior, we're going to be using uh, the functions that uh, are authorized in the subject, starting with VA list. So the prototype is quite simple because actually VA list is not a function. It's, uh, you can see it as a structure or uh, an array that is going to be used by the rest of the functions uh, that we're allowed to use. So VA start, VA arg, and VA end. And so uh, what it actually is, if you want to visualize it, it's like a, a structure that will be storing all of your extra elements. So the elements that will be um, in place of the ellipsis in the printf uh, prototype. But uh, this structure, it's not our job to manually initialize or free it. We're, we won't be using malloc or we won't be using free. Uh, this is what the VA start and VA end macros or functions are for, as we can see now. So VA start, the prototype is simple. It doesn't return anything, but it takes two uh, parameters. The first one is the VA list that you just declared, probably. And the second one is the last known parameter. So uh, what it does is that it's, uh, VA start is going to initialize the argument list so that it can be used uh, by VA arg and VA end, and it must be called before calling those two functions. Uh, and the parameter last known parameter is actually the name of the last parameter that you know about in the uh, fun uh, function prototype. So for example, if you look at the prototype for ftprintf, the last known parameter in this one is format. Basically, it's always going to be the one that's right before the ellipsis. So if you create another variadic function that takes maybe five uh, known parameters, or maybe four parameters before format, the last known parameter is still going to be format. It's the one right before the ellipsis, which are the variable arguments. Now that we've declared our variable, so this uh, array of elements, we can initialize it using VA arg. So the prototype takes uh, the argument list, the VA list that you need uh, to use, and the type of argument that you uh, want to retrieve, and it's going to return this argument type. So every time it's called, it's going to modify or update your VA list, your argument list, so that the next time that you use VA arg on this uh, argument list, it's going to be able to return the next argument. It's a bit confusing, but um, wait for the visual representation so that you can understand it better. And so it uh, returns basically the element that you need, and it returns uh, the element that your VA list is currently pointing to. So if you use it, if you use VA arg 
right after calling VA start on your VA list, it's going to return the first argument after your last known parameter. And if you keep calling VA arg on your argument list, on your VA list, it's going to basically give uh, retrieve uh, the elements one by one, uh, left to right. And you have to remember that it's your job to make sure that you're giving uh, VA arg the correct type of variable to return. If you look at the prototype, the last parameter is argument type. Uh, it's your job to make sure you're giving it the right one because uh, this system, the VA list and VA uh, arg, they don't keep track of what's stored inside of your structure. And it's going to assume that you know what you're doing and that you know what you're asking for. And so now that we've used VA uh, arg to retrieve our elements from the VA list, and let's say that we're done, we can call VA end. So the prototype is just uh, very simple. It's one parameter, which is uh, the VA list that you've been using all this time. And so you have to remember that each invocation of VA start has to be matched by a corresponding invocation of VA end in the same function. So one VA start is one VA end. What VA end does is that it's actually, it's basically going to destroy your VA list. So your list, your array of elements. Uh, and after it's called, it's uh, the this variable argument list is going to be left undefined. So now we can move on to the visual part, uh, visual representation of this video. So let's say you want to use ftprintf. So you pass it a format string and some arguments uh, that you that you want to print. So if you compare it to the prototype of printf, you will realize that the first part is a string of characters, which is your format. And the second part of this um, function is the variable arguments. So 42 and n are uh, your variable arguments that are needed by your format string to print out the correct output. So if you want to see what's kind of happening inside of this kind of function, we can uh, see that we have all the authorized functions available to use to implement ftprintf. And what do we need? Maybe we want to have an int that would be our return value, because as you remember, printf returns an int. And uh, it's a good thing to keep it in mind again, so you have to, uh, so you can remember it when you actually code your project. And so we will use VA list to basically create, uh, to declare an array of elements that we want to use to store the variable elements. So here, the 42 and the n. VA list is just a declaration of variable, just like int right before. You, VA list is basically the type of variable, and then you can give it a name. And now that it's declared, we'll have to call VA start on uh, VA list or VA list to initialize it. And what it's going to do, as you can see, it's going to take your variable elements and store them inside of your VA list. And uh, VA list will now point to the first element of this array, of this uh, structure. In uh, VA list here, I wrote the type of elements uh, next to each element, but that's not, it's just for visual, uh, it's just a visual aid. Because actually, as I said before, VA list does not uh, keep track of what's inside of it. So that's why when you want to retrieve, let's say you want to retrieve the first uh, value in uh, the first element stored in your VA list, because maybe you want to print it using a function of your choice, you will be calling VA arg, and you will call it on your VA list, and you will give it the type of element that you want to retrieve. So what that's going to do is that it's going to return your element that was stored and it's going to update, as we said before, it's going to update VA list so that now it points to the next element. And that's uh, why you have to give it the type of element that you need because uh, it's basically going to update the pointer of VA list by the size of the element and it's going to store to the next element in memory. So now let's say that we want to uh, retrieve n we know that uh, VA list is now pointing to n because we keep track of what it's pointing to. And so we can call VA arg again the exact same way, except that now instead of uh, telling it that we need an int, we tell it that we need a character. And so now what it's going to do, it's the exact same thing. It's going to return your character n and it's going to update VA list by the size of a character. And so now it points to 
the area of memory right after your last element. And since we know what we're doing, we now know that the, we've retrieved all of the elements in our structure, in our VA list. So if we want to cleanly um, dispose of it, we can call VA end. We just give it uh, uh, the structure that we declared at the beginning. And what it's going to do, basically, is going to destroy this structure. And now the VA list is going to be undefined. And that's how, basically, you can use these functions to create your own version of printf. So that's it. Good luck uh, with this project. If this video helped, please let me know in the comments or drop a like. It's always a, a true pleasure when I see that I helped someone. If you see that uh, something I said was wrong, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments as well. And if you have any questions also, and so maybe I can reply or someone else can. And uh, if you have any ideas for new videos, something you need, please let me know. Uh, I was thinking maybe uh, shooting a video of how to code a very simple tester for your projects, because it's, based, it's actually my favorite part of 42 projects. I spend so much time uh, writing testers because it's very fun and you can make them you know, visually appealing. And if you need, you can find the address of my GitHub on the screen. It's just my username. Bye bye.